Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about the continuously applied wrench reactor, the CAW. Um, the principle here is that whenever a reactor reaches a certain heat, we use a uh, electric wrench in lossless mode to remove it, and then we put another reactor in the same spot. So we place down our initial reactor and we use a sensor location card on it, or a sensor location kit to get our card here, and we put that in a remote thermal monitor. Uh, since this is based on coordinates, whenever we put a reactor in the same place, uh, it continues to function with it. So I've got this heat set to 3500, and that's pretty conservative, um, but really anything over 5000 might not work for us because we can't be evaporating the water down below there. So whenever our reactor reaches 3500 heat, this emits a redstone signal. So if a redstone signal is being emitted, it will go into this block, which will toggle the redstone torch attached to it. Uh, which will then turn off our reactor, so that's a little safety mechanism there. Uh, additionally, it's going this torch here applies a redstone pulse to the block above it, um, which powers this deployer, uh, which is issuing nuclear reactors down below. We also have a line of redstone coming around, so we are also um, using a deployer for our electric wrenching. To keep everything stocked, we're using applied energetics, and we've got a ME interface, we've got four storage buses, and we've got two export buses. So our ME interface has no specific configuration on it, <coughs> but there is an obsidian pipe right above it. So whenever our uh, nuclear reactor is being wrenched, uh, it's falling down to this uh, pit of water here, which is pushing everything into that obsidian pipe, picking it up, and tossing it back into our ME system. Now we don't have any traditional storage on our system, we're only using uh, these uh, storage buses for our storage. So the, the wrench mechanism is taken care of by these two storage buses. So this one is set for a uh, lossless mode electric wrench at full power, and this one is set for a lossless mode electric wrench with 10,000 EU gone, which is the amount that you'll lose um, performing a single lossless operation. Um, additionally, we've got export buses. Um, one of them is on our MFSU, and that is sending the uh, drained wrenches. And one of them is on our deployer, and that's sending back our full wrenches. So these storage buses, the, the reason that we've, we've had to set the wrenches on them, even though we're using the export buses, is so that we can retrieve the items back out of these. Uh, and the reason we had to toggle an item is because we've got uh, kind of a catch-all here. Um, that isn't configured with any items at all, and this is going to be taking our uranium cells. Um, right above here, we are storing our nuclear reactors in the top deployer. So the everything except for the uh, unconfigured storage bus has been set to a priority of 64. And the reason for that is we want to ensure that when things get picked up, they go into um, their, their configured storage bus first. So the only items that should be coming into this storage bus, which has a priority of one, uh, should be the uranium cells that we've got in there. Uh, obviously, if you had other reactor components, those would go in there as well. Um, but nuclear reactors and wrenches uh, will not go into there. So coming off the front of our nuclear reactor, we just have an HV transformer here, running a little glass fiber cable over, and powering this MFSU. Um, this access terminal here is not required, but we did go ahead and put this on just so we can take a look. Uh, and if you want to resupply your reactor, you could do so from here, uh, or add more reactors or more wrenches to your system. Uh, so this is powering everything. Uh, power is coming off here, powering our ME system, and the cable is also running under the ground uh, into a MV and then LV transformer so that we can power a remote thermal monitor. And you can see we're actually getting a, a net plus of power here, uh, although we're only, I believe we're using six uranium cells right now. Yep, so uh, you obviously could put more in here. It'll cause your heat to go up faster, but it, it should be more efficient for you. Um, you could also use, you know, double or triple cells. So the thing to keep in mind is that you need to stay ahead of the uh, 10,000 EU that's being discharged by the wrench every time this fires, and if I stand too close there, I might accidentally grab some of those. So this pit down here in the bottom with water in it, what is that about? Well, originally when I was doing this, I tried to block the reactor in completely so it only had one place to fall, 
um, but they actually just cause components to clip through the walls and just really go all over the place and make a mess. So this is the best way I've found so far um, to ensure that my components are collected and put back into the system. Uh, unless I'm standing right on the edge of this, I haven't really had any problems with it. And you could build yourself a little retaining wall here to, to keep people away from your system. Um, you may have noticed I do have multiple nuclear reactors in here. Um, I've got uh, five total. There's one deployed any time and four in my deployer. Now that's more than you really need, but you are going to want two or three. Uh, you have to have one in your deployer here at the time your reactor is broken and you could possibly have one that's still floating through the water and trying to get back to your obsidian pipe depending on how quickly you have this cycling. Uh, the other thing to remember is that when you're considering what you want to put in your nuclear reactor as far as uh, how many cells, um, just make sure that you are not um, going to exceed your water evaporation heat on a single pulse. Um, you do need to give yourself some kind of lead way for your remote thermal monitor to kick everything off and you don't want to be evaporating the water underneath there uh, or the things might not filter back into your obsidian pipe. So that's really it guys. Um, there are two Red Power 2 deployers, a Buildcraft uh, obsidian transport pipe, a, uh, I believe it's a, I can't recall the name of the mod, but there's a, a nuclear uh, nuclear monitoring or, or nuclear toolkit where we got this uh, remote thermal monitor, industrial craft 2 where we have a nuclear reactor and then all of our power here and then applied energistics um, to manage the items and put them back where they go. Uh, so I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, do remember you can use um, you know higher temperatures here and you can use more components inside there. Um, the more you get on each cycle uh, the more efficient this will be and the more power you'll build up. So I uh, hope it's helpful. Have a great day. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them below. Thank you.